to hold on for now and just take more stories. I'll come back to you in a okay. bit. Thank you so much okay. uh, for now. All right. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Sunday ruled out any fresh governorship election in Bias State as requested by the All Progressive Congress APC. Annex Director of Voter Education and Publicity, Oluwale Osaze Uzi, in an interview in Abuja, dismissed the APC's demand for a fresh governorship poll in Bialsa State. The Centre Commission on Friday concluded its work on the Bialsa State governorship poll. The APC National Chairman Adam Sushomale had in a later date in February 14, 2020, an address to the INEC Chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, called for a fresh election in Bialsa State. The APC national chairman said the swearing-in of the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Doye Diri, as the state governor was unconstitutional as it did not meet the mandatory constitutional requirements. But in their swift reactions, the PDP and the River State Governor, Yesam Wike, dismissed the APC national chairman's claim and insisted that Diri would be inaugurated. After a meeting of its top management on Friday, INEC at a press conference confirmed that Diri met the constitutional requirements. Now, renowned senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zahome, has thrown his weight behind the Supreme Court's judgment, which sacked the All Progressive Congress gubernatorial candidate in Bias' state, David Lyon. Mr. Zahome says the judgment is in line with the nation's constitution and is a recipe for law and order. As far as I know, legally, constitutionally speaking, as a constitutional lawyer, there is no candidate for the APC in Bayelsa State. The constitution says the governor cannot run without a deputy. And that everything that pertains to that governor also pertains to a deputy. So I said to separate both the deputy and the governor, it's like trying to futilely attempt to play Hamlet without the Prince of Denmark or to argue that six is not the same as half a dozen. Still with us in the studio is Elder Statesman Pa Uma Eliazo. I got it right. Yes, <laughs> okay, so the recent controversy uh, over the Supreme Court rulings are, uh, an in are they an indication that the electoral process has not delivered its mandate? Well, the Supreme Court or the court system as a whole, they are given the right to adjudicate any disputes arising out of election. They are doing that. They are doing their job. So one cannot fault, fault them. One can fault their decision, but that's a different, a different matter. But if their disputes are arising out of um, the electoral process, you go to the tribunals. From the tribunals, you go to the appeal court, I, I believe. Yes. And that is whether, if you are still not satisfied, you go to the Supreme Court. And if somebody is not satisfied with the decision of the Supreme Court, what yes. happens? What yeah, options yeah, are there? The question is what happens? It is, the onus is on that person now, after you have reached the final point, to see whether there are things he did not say or did not produce at the time of the trial, or what the court did not take into consideration, which they ought to have taken into consideration. And the court may, in its own wisdom, decide, Okay, to have another look at it. Do, do you see have, that happening? Have, you know, there, there have been occasions in Nigeria where that has been done. Okay. Do, the, do, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me. Let so me it, 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 I'm thinking about the head your heart. Yes, yeah, there's, there's been, an, there's it's, going to be a review. A re, 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 have well, said so? Um, well, we understand he has written to the Supreme Court yes. and there is going to be a review. Yeah. But do if, you actually believe that the Supreme Court will? maybe reverse itself? If they are satisfied that they made a mistake, they ought to reverse themselves. Because well, this is what Justice Oputa said long ago, and I can't remember the exact words. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. I only study constitutional laws and because I've been involved, I'm a political scientist. Justice Oputa, in one 
particular case, I think it was 1989, said, look, agreed, Supreme Court is a final court, but we are fallible men who sit in that court. If we are convinced that we made a mistake, the thing now is to weigh, is this our mistake going to cause more harm than good? If your mistake is going to cause more harm than good, there is no reason why you should not find a way to reverse that mistake so that you don't cause more harm out there. That is how I understood it at the time. I don't know the, all the technical the languages. That goes with and it, yeah. they had done that, I think, in a number of cases where the thing went back to the Supreme Court and they took the opportunity of another case that was coming to reverse themselves because it's only the Supreme Court that I can override this thing. So what they call stare decisis doesn't apply. So let, let's, let's, have a let's, new case. Let, let's look at the, the INEC situation for a bit. And Which one? The INEC on its INEC. own okay. as, and as a commission that stands to organize and oversee elections in the country. Yes. Do you think maybe they are oversaddled with too many responsibility? They are part of the litigation team. They conduct elections. They plan the um, I mean, registration process. They make sure the material are available. Are they overburdened, in your opinion? Uh, in my opinion, they have taken on more than they can chew. An electoral commission is to conduct elections. And if there is a dispute, a person coming from the electoral commission comes as a witness to say what happened. Say you have an electoral officer at the counting polling clerk or polling this thing. And at that point, political parties have their own polling agents watching what is happening. If there is any dispute, the person who should bring the papers to the court or who should I say, yes, this is a proper INEC paper. I was there when we recorded this report. It's the electoral person, not a policeman. And that is the case that you heard, and, and we keep going back to that. He had now saying, the person on the, the Supreme Court this, uh, uh, gave, the gave the, the, this thing was a policeman, and he's not the right person to tender a doc, that document. And he couldn't even read what he tendered. Yeah. What, what, what are the real dangers if we do not review our electoral process as it currently stands? Yeah, I, I believe that we need to review the whole thing from beginning, the whole electoral process. Let me say one thing more. Elections, I mean, what is the function of an election in a democracy? It is one, to produce good leaders. Two, to give opportunity for people to participate in the political process. And this is, according to our question, once every four years people participate. That is the time that we see those who are going to represent us. Democratic theory assumes that we know the people that we are going to vote for and you know their character, and you vote for them based on what you know about them. That is not happening in Nigeria anymore because money has taken over. So we have to find a way of getting people to participate meaningfully in the electoral process. Okay, I guess we'll have to put it in there. Thank you very much for coming on the news. Thank you very much.